Hi, I'm Carl Franklin. In this episode of Blazor Train, I'm going to show you how to move your variables outside of pages and other components and into a state bag. What did you call me? Hey, I'm talking to the passengers here. Do you mind? Anyway, there are a few good reasons for doing this. First is the dry principle. Don't repeat yourself. In messing around with Blazor, you might have created duplicates of variables in different pages and then had to worry about how to sync them up with other pages and components. Not good. Another reason is persistence. At some point, you might want to save the state of your application so the next time your user logs on, it can be in exactly the same uh, state as it was when they signed off. Well, we're going to look at persistence in an upcoming episode, but for now, I'm going to show you two different ways to handle application state. Each has their pros and cons, but I'm sure that one of them will be just right for your application. And that's all coming up right now, right here on Blaze and Train! All right, I have created an application called application state. It's a Blazor server application, but you could just as easily use a Blazor WebAssembly application. It works exactly the same. So we're going to move application state out into its own entity, if you will, outside the pages and components. And I'm going to do that in two ways. Count them. One, two. The first way is with a cascading parameter. So I'm going to go to my shared folder. I'm going to add a new Razor component and it's going to be called Cascading App State. Now just take a look at this from the top. We've got a cascading value which is equal to this. This is the component itself, right? Just like a class in C Sharp, the object, this represents the object. Now we've got a render fragment called child content. And this is a pattern you see in components in Blazor over and over again. Whenever you want to have a placeholder for other content, other components. And in this case, it's going to be everything in the app. All right, because we're going to wrap the whole app and the router and everything inside this cascading value. So needless to say, we need that. Now you've got property handlers. And you just put whatever properties you want in here of whatever types you want, but use this particular pattern where the getter just returns the private value and the setter sets the value but then calls state has changed. And as long as you do that, everything else is going to work fine. Let's go to the app and wrap. All right. I'm just going to put a cascading app state around the entire router. Okay, there it is. That's it. That's all you have to do. Now you can access those properties on that app state, but rather than injecting it like we would do with a service, we're going to make a cascading parameter out of it. So before we can do anything else, let's go to main layout. And I want to show you something here. The main layout for the default template in Blazor has the nav menu on the side, right? And it's got the body down here, and it's got this sort of toolbar-like thing across the top. But this just has an about link, right? That's all there is to it. I'm going to replace this with a component that we'll create called a toolbar. And that toolbar will appear at the top of every page, just like this about appears at the top of every page, right? So let's add a new Razor component called Toolbar. Here we are. Now we've got our cascading parameter, right? Cascading app state. That is getting a reference to the instance of app state that is wrapping this entire application okay any component you want to access app state in you just plug this in there and you've got it but check it out i've got i'm doing something with enabled right here if it's true we're showing a button that's green that's what that class is and if it's false we're, we're setting a uh, showing a button that's red 
uh, when I click the update message button, I'm just setting the message property to, uh, can you see that? Am I out of the way? Yeah. We're setting the message property to message updated at and then whatever time it is right now, just so that we can see that it worked. All right, now let's go back to main layout and I can replace this with an instance of toolbar. All right, pretty simple, right? So far? Okay, now let's go to index and modify that. We're gonna do a little cross component uh, communication here. All right, here's my page. I've got two buttons, one toggles enabled and the other updates the message. We've got the message shown there between uh, some H, uh, an H3 element. And here we go, we've got our app state right there and we're just setting the properties. Enabled equals not enabled and message equals, you know, current time. So let's check it out. All right, let's start with updating the message in index. There it is. Update the message in the toolbar. There it is. See the time changes. And now I can toggle enabled and disabled and the toolbar reflects it. So all of the updates are done when we set the property we're calling uh, invoke state has changed essentially. And so it just magically works. How cool is that? Now, our old friend the counter has a state problem, right? And I showed this in numerous demos. But when I click on the counter, click me button, right? It updates. But when I navigate off the page and back, it gets reset to zero. That's because that value, that counter, is defined in the counter page. Like this is a classic example of when you'd want to move something to app state rather than using uh, variables, rather than using local variables. So let's go back to our app state and we'll add a counter property. There it is right there. It's just an integer property with the same state has changed in the setter and go back to counter and all I'm going to do here is add the cascading parameter and we're going to change references from that you know count to app state counter that's it now it's up to six go home I can do some other stuff here go back and it's still six cool all right now, just to show you, we can go back down another level. Let's add a child component to the index page. I'm going to add a new razor component called child component. There it is right there. And now this guy isn't going to display anything, but we're going to change app state message. We're going to change it to message updated by child component. Okay. Now, if I Add a reference to child component in the index right there. And run it again. There we go. Child component can update the message. Toolbar can update it. The child component can update it. The page can update it. In other words, any component that has this cascading parameter and uses those to bind into UI elements will automatically update. Now the second way that we're gonna manage application state is with a service. There's more code, it's a little more involved, but there's a reason that you would use a service rather than a cascading parameter. With a cascading parameter, everything updates, you don't have to do anything special, but you also don't get notified when something changes, and you might want to be notified when something changes. All right, for example, you might want to do something in a page that has nothing to do with the UI when the toolbar changes something in the state, or vice versa. You might want to do all your management in the toolbar and keep everything right there, and then now you need to know when things on the page update those values so something can happen, right? Maybe 
database access, right? Maybe you're persisting things. So this is the method that I'm using currently in one of my applications. Again, it's a little bit more involved, has a little bit more code, but I think it's fairly easy to understand and I think you're gonna get it just fine. Whoa, whoa! All right, so I have reset the application. It's still called application state, but it's a brand new project, also a Blazor server project, but it can also be a web assembly application, doesn't matter. We're gonna add a folder called services. And to that services folder, we're gonna add a class called app state. All right, so there's four main sections to this. Let's start at the bottom. So we've defined an event as an action of component base and string. So this is essentially an event handler that will pass a component base, of which every page and component is, and a string, which we're going to uh, use as a, a, the property, which property in the app state has changed. We'll call it state changed. We have a private uh, method called notify state changed, which we pass the source and the property, and that essentially raises our event, right? State changed invoke, uh, if it's not null, passing the source and the property. Now here's what we've got up top. We've got three properties with getters and private setters. So we do not want to allow anyone to set the property except through these methods, all right? So we've got message, enabled, and counter, just like before. And the pattern is that we have a update message, let's say, and we've got a component base source. In other words, the, the component that changes it is going to pass in itself this. And the reason will be obvious in a minute. And then the value of the property that's changing. So I'm saying, this dot message equals message, and then I'm calling notify state changed. All right, so that is the pattern for as many properties as you want. Now, why do we do that? Why do we even need that component base? Well, here's why. I'm gonna handle this event wherever I need to know what event changed, and I also need to know who fired it, because if I'm handling the event and I raise the event, it's gonna fire in my component. So I just want to do a little check. If source does not equal this, then I knew it came from another component and I can handle it. All right, let's go to startup and we will add a scoped service, app state. All right, now let's go to imports razor and we'll add an, a using statement here so that we can access it in our different components, all right? Now again, we'll create a toolbar. It's gonna look a little different this time, however. So we're injecting the app state and implementing iDisposable. iDisposable because you're gonna be hooking an event and you wanna unhook it when you uh, go out of scope. So let's start there. Let's go down to the bottom. And you'll see on initialized, we're uh, hooking the state changed event async to our app state state changed, right? So app state state changed passes the source and property. And if source does not equal this, this is where I can inspect the property to determine if an action needs to be taken. All right, so I can say if property is message, and hey, I wanna save that message in a database, boom, I can save it right there, okay? Now in dispose, everything is the same here except for this little operator. We're unhooking the state changed, and you have to do that, otherwise you're gonna have what? Memory leaks, not good. All right, so pretty much this is almost the same uh, as what we did before. We're calling update mes message button clicked. But now instead of just setting app state message equals whatever, we have to go through this little check right here so that we can make sure the notifications happen. 
And uh, let's go back to our main layout and add the toolbar just like we did earlier. And now we'll update our index page. All right, the index page is also going to implement iDisposable and inject that app state. And so this, these bottom three items look exactly the same, except I'm not really doing anything here, except invoking status change, so everything will update. And now we have our buttons that uh, toggle enabled and update the message using that same method. Always pass in this as the first parameter. All right, now let's try it. All right, updating the message here, updating the message there. If you don't at least call uh, state has changed in that handler, nothing's going to update. All right, so this is another difference is that the state has changed call was happening in app state when it was a cascading parameter. Now you are responsible for updating your UI with it in the event handler. But fortunately, you only have to do it once in app state underscore state has changed. All right, let's update our counter to use this same method. All right. Same goo at the bottom and incrementing count. I'm calling update counter. I don't actually use this current count. Don't need it. Get rid of it right there. All right, set it to five, go home, update the message, go back to counter. It's still five. All right, so the behavior is exactly the same. The difference is with this little bit of extra code and using a service, now we have uh, access to an event that happens when anything changes, and then we can take action accordingly. The one last demo that I'm gonna do is that child component. I have the child component, and I don't have to uh, use the dispose method because I'm not actually hooking any events here. I'm just going to call update message. That's the only difference. Plug that in here. Same as before. And now let's take one more spin around the blazer. Here we go. Updating our message here and here. Toggle enabled. And guess what? We can update it from the child component as well. And that's all she wrote for application state. Back to you in the studio, Carl. You know, ever since I moved all my variables into a state bag, don't even. My app runs much more efficiently and has fewer bugs. I wish I could say the same thing for my backyard. Hey, thanks for riding the rails with me today. This is where I jump off. I'll see you next time. Place a train.